Hi, I'm Benjamin Sturm, and I'll be talking about the history of flight. Gliders are the first known form of flight. In the 1850s, Serge Dorcaley tested extensively with gliders, thus leading him to discover the four fundamental forces of flight, thrust, lift, drag, and weight. He was also credited as being the first man to be able to build a glider that was able to carry a full-grown man. In the early 1900s, we had the Wright brothers. The Wright brothers tested extensively as well with gliders and kites very methodically so as to create their patented three-axis control system that was led them to be able to control using roll, pitch, and yaw. Once they felt that they had mastered glider flight, they decided to create a lightweight aluminum engine with their mechanic in their bike shop. Charlie Taylor was the mechanic. And uh, at Kitty Hawk in North Carolina, they had the first powered flight. After the Wright brothers pioneered the initial airplane, it, the technology took off. And in World War I and II, uh, aircraft warfare was the first type of airplane fighting to be used extensively, using bombers, scout planes, and fighters. As engine technology increased and airplanes were able to fly faster and faster, we needed better control systems for airplanes due to the fact that the pilots were not able to control them by their own powers no more. So we now have the introduction of hydraulic landing systems as well as controlling. Also, gyros were used during this time to help the fighters be able to control the plane's roll, pitch, and yaw without having to pay attention to it constantly. Uh, during this time period, Hans von Ohain designed the first jet engine, which was immediately implemented in airplanes. And just like with gas-powered airplanes, these jet-powered airplanes were able to fly faster, higher, and even better. So now we need to be able to create pressurized aircraft, which Boeing did in 1938 with the Boeing 307. This was known as the first pressurized aircraft, and this was important because now airplanes were able to fly high above the weather in the clouds, thus avoiding extreme turbulence which used to plague passengers quite often. Afterwards, we now have the Boeing 747, which was introduced in 1969, which uses GPS, autopilot, as well as other modern features, which now Armando will talk about. Hi, my name is Armando Camacho, and I'll be discussing current plane design. In regards to current design, the first airplanes were constructed out of wood, but advancements in material design has enabled the structural design of planes to be comprised of metal. Nowadays, the current designs use composites for structural integrity, which makes the plane much lighter. Aluminum is used on an exterior material because of its ductile properties and strong weight to strength ratio. With regards to equipment, onboard controls have grown exponentially in the past 100 years. Post World War II, radio, GPS, and autopilot were developed and improved upon. Sensors such as the traffic collision avoidance system, radar, and over 100 other systems are now implemented during flight. Several layers of redundancy are also implemented to prevent catastrophic failure in the event of malfunctioning. Jet engines, initially designed in the 1930s, remain basically unchanged. The main function is air is guided in, compressed by a multi-stage compressor, mixed with jet fuel, combusted, and then expelled out the back of superheated gas, which produces thrust. My name is Frank Arsui, and I'm going to be discussing the future of commercial airplanes. In the future, a higher efficiency is going to be the main priority, whether it's improving aerodynamics, decreasing overall weight with use of composites, more passengers, uh, more efficient uh, turbo engines, as well as lower maintenance costs with the use of better designs. The two leading manufacturers in this endeavor are Boeing and Airbus. The two aircrafts I'm going to be discussing in regards to Boeing are the 737 MAX and the 777X. The 737 MAX encompasses a larger wing area which allows it to carry more fuel as well as uh, have a longer range. It will be able to carry about 200 uh, passengers as well as encompass a new winglet technology which is 1.8% better than the current design and it will be powered by two CMF engines where, are, which are much more uh, fuel efficient. The 77X is gonna be considered the most fuel efficient twin engine jet in the world. It's gonna encompass a state of the art interior as you can see in these photos behind me, uh, such as curved screens, um, better uh, seating, as well as larger windows. The Airbus took a more broader approach when it came to the future of uh, commercial airplanes. Um, such as improving air traffic management in order to reduce the time uh, that, you're actually, that passengers are actually in the air, as well as lowering fuel consumption and emissions. Now I'm going to discuss the five innovations that Airbus is considering. The first one is the EcoPlan, which is going to use electric motors to assist planes when it comes to takeoff to decrease fuel consumption. The second one is the Express Skyways, um, which with the improved technology within planes, intelligent aircrafts will be able to organize themselves uh, into a formation similar to that of birds in order to decrease drag. The third one is a free glide approach, same concept as previously, as technology improves, the more intelligent the aircraft becomes, 
uh, planes will actually be able to free glide into, into landing and approaches. The fourth one is uh, ground operations, more efficient ground operations. They want to have autonomous electric powered ground vehicles that will be there on the, on the tarmac waiting for the aircraft to, to come so they can pick them up and take them to the terminals as efficiently as possible. And finally, uh, different uses of power, um, whether it's the use of biofuels, um, electric power planes, hydrogen fuel cells, or solar energy. Thank you.